If Thomas Keller came to dinner, I wouldn't serve him bluefin tuna or dredged ribeye or a rack of lamb. With a little culinary training, any idiot can cook those. What I would cook for Thomas Keller is a chicken breast. A few years ago, I made a video about bone and skin on chicken breast roast. The link is below. It is as moist and tender as sous vide chicken, but with the flavor and toastiness of a rotisserie chicken. My students describe it as simply unreal. But perfection comes at a price. Not everybody's store sells this kind of cut, so you might have to cut up your own chicken. For most cooks, this dish is completely out of the weekday repertoire because it takes over an hour if you include the oven preheating time and a very long resting time after your chicken roast is done. And it's extremely smoky. So unless you have a great fan of your stove, it is likely to set off your smoke alarms. My goal was to redesign this dish from the ground up to make it faster and more accessible to anybody on a weekday night. I finally did it, and I couldn't be happier with the results. This new technique is not smoky at all, does not require an oven, and it's ready in 20 minutes. That includes resting time. Now that, my friends, is a dish worthy of both Thomas Keller and Rachel Ray. We'll start with two skin-on-boneless chicken breasts. The skin is crucial. It will protect our breasts from drying out as they cook. Under the skin, in the thickest part of the breast, is hiding a rubbery chunk of fat. If you want thin and crispy skin, I suggest you remove it. Now, let's salt the chicken under the skin. This will increase the salt penetration, which is very important to helping our chicken stay moist. It works just like brining, but without all the water. Salt the other side, too. Put the chicken on a plate and refrigerate overnight for at least four hours. If possible, keep the plate uncovered to help the skin dry, which will help the chicken brown. When you're ready to cook, turn on your oven to 400 Fahrenheit. Depending on the size of your chicken breast, you might not even need it, but we want to get it going just in case. We will not need the oven for at least 12 minutes, so feel free to proceed with the recipe as soon as you turn on the oven. Set a 10-inch skillet, if possible stainless steel, over high heat. Add a splash of oil. I'm using grapeseed because of its high smoke point, but any oil will work. Wait for the oil to shimmer. While the pan is heating up, dry the chicken very thoroughly on paper towels. When the pan is hot, add the chicken skin side down. I like to fill the empty spots with carrots as placeholders to prevent them from overheating. This reduces the smoke and ensures that my brown bits aren't burnt. Cover the pan. Reduce the heat to medium-low and cook without peaking for 10 minutes. Your chicken should be making sizzling noises, but they shouldn't be too loud. Did you figure out what I'm trying to do here? Basically, I'm cooking my chicken breast the way I cook my duck breast, mostly on the skin side, starting at a very high heat and then dropping it to low. This results in beautifully crispy and brown skin and very gently cooked meat. The duck would be cooked uncovered, but for the chicken I need a lid. This allows us to cook chicken to a slightly higher temperature without drying it out. It's been 10 minutes and we're ready to test our chicken. Chicken breasts are extremely uneven, so finding the minimum temperature inside isn't trivial. I like to insert my thermometer at a very steep angle in the thickest part and slowly move it in and out to try to find the minimum. Keep in mind that the minimum might not be in the middle. The skin side will be warmer than the flesh side. I'm at 108. Another couple of minutes, and I think we'll get to our target 125 Fahrenheit. How's the skin doing? Nicely browned, but I want it a bit more crispy. Let's crank up the heat to medium-high, cover our chicken for two minutes, and then test again. My first breast is done. The lowest temperature I'm getting on it is 126 Fahrenheit, but my other breast is 117. 
Let's flip them both over and give the done one another 30 seconds to pick up a few brown bits with the flesh side. Out it goes! The other breast can go in the oven for 2 minutes to finish up. Let's see how it's doing. Good! Now its minimum temperature is over 125 Fahrenheit and it can come out too. See how the oven let us cook the flesh side gently without drying out? The breasts I am cooking are about 250 grams each. If yours are smaller, they might be done sooner, and if they are bigger, they might require longer oven time. I suggest you check them every two minutes while they are in the oven. Letting the chicken rest on a warm plate for about 7 minutes is a must. During this time, the internal temperature will go up to about 140 to 150 Fahrenheit. If you want, you can leave a thermometer inside the chicken and watch the temperature. When it stops going up and starts to go down, you know the chicken is ready to serve. I know such a low temperature strikes fear into the heart of every American, but this chicken will look and taste completely done, just way juicier than you're used to. It is also so soft you can cut it with a fork. This technique does take a little bit of skill and getting used to, so here are some common problems you might run into. My chicken didn't get brown during the first 10 minutes of cooking. You probably reduced your temperature too much after you covered the chicken. Try a slightly higher temperature next time. Figuring out by how much to reduce the temperature will require some trial and error because all stoves are different and all skillets are different. I also want to remind you that the chicken had to be very thoroughly dried before going in the pan. If it's not dry, it won't brown well. My chicken got too dark during the first 10 minutes of cooking. Your heat was probably too high. Try reducing it a little more next time. My chicken didn't go up to 140 Fahrenheit during rest. The smaller the chicken breasts, the less the temperature goes up during rest. So if you're cooking breasts that are much smaller than 250 grams, try cooking them to 130 to 135 Fahrenheit instead of 125. Also, make sure that you found the minimum internal temperature. You might have stuck a thermometer into a spot that reads 125, while another untested spot is 110. This is a big issue with the thermometer use, so I'll link to a video where I discuss it in detail below this video. I know many of you have concerns about cooking your chicken to 140 Fahrenheit. How could this be safe? It's safe because it's a solid muscle. If this chicken has any harmful bacteria on it, it would be on the outside and the heat of the skillet would kill it. That's why it's perfectly safe to eat medium-rare steak, pork chops and duck breast. Have you ever wondered why we eat duck breasts medium-rare but scream bloody murder if our chicken has the tiniest trace of pink? Yeah, just saying. Once you master this technique, you can take this dish to a whole new level with a pan sauce. I'll show you how to make a fantastic one next week with porcini mushrooms. This video was brought to you by viewers like you. If you liked it, click here to support my channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit that little bell button for notifications, and if you're ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.